Hiya! And welcome back to Cilio Tales of a New Dawn. I can't think of anything to say, but, uh, hmm. I feel like I started this a little bit later because, uh, I'm trying to fix issues with To the Sky. Because there's like a huge bug with it right now, and I have no clue how to fix it. So, let's just hop right in. I don't know, man. I guess it's just because I worked the last one, too. Was kind of hoping I'd get to have fun this year. Diego and I were discussing the day ahead and there being several hours before we were doing meet with Ty. Bah, it ain't all bad, I guess. Last year we did better than expected, and Ty gave us a small bonus. If we're lucky, maybe it'll happen again. Hiya! Really? How much are we talking, exactly? 150. On top of the usual paycheck, not bad at all for one day's work. Damn, true enough. Here's hoping then, huh? Damn right. You know, you seem oddly excited for this. Hello! Huh? What do you mean? I guess it just seems like you're looking forward to it. Well, uh, I've never run a stall at a festival before. I'm thinking it might be fun. That was a terrible bluff. I was going to have to clue Diego in on what was going on soon enough. Yeah, fun, sure. You're weird, dude. No, I'm not. Yeah, huh? Looking forward to going to work. Something's seriously wrong with you. Just think- just think how many delicious burgers and bottles of bourbon a hard day of work can buy. Alright, I concede. You had me at burgers and bourbon. Burgers and bourbon. Yes. So, you've got a few hours to kill. Any plans? None whatsoever. I was probably just gonna laze around- laze about here playing video games or watching cartoons. You? Don't know. I was thinking I might head into town, kill some time. Cool. Well, I guess I'll see you at the festival grounds later then, huh? Yep. See you then, Diego. Later, man. I grabbed my things and headed out. I had a few hours to kill before I was needed at the festival. This was a good opportunity to fill some time if there was anything I had to do in town. The morning had been successfully filled, so I made my way to the festival grounds where I met with Ty and Diego, the latter of whom had only recently arrived himself. Ah, perfect timing, Aiden. We're expecting Lucas any moment now. Hey, Aiden. Where's the stall? Lucas is bringing it. I like a tow bar myself, unfortunately. Besides, he crafts stages, I craft drinks. I have no doubt Lucas could erect our stall in a fraction of the time. Makes sense to me. I'm hardly good at... I'm hardly any good at that sort of thing myself. It's kind of strange Lucas still hired me. Well, it is true he does a lot more than just stage assembly. Ah, speak of the devil. Oh lord, it's Darius. I mean, Eric. Morning. Eh? It's after midday, big guy. Huh, time flies. Afternoon, then. You are both in the nick of time. Eric, didn't expect you to... Sp to see you working in so soon. How's the foot? It was nothing. I'm fighting fit as ever. Looking closely, it was evident Eric was favoring his other leg. I'm really shrugged. Eric was nothing if not stubborn. Hmm. I thought there would be three of you? That was the plan. As would happen, Aiden helped me out last night, so we weren't as snowed under as I expected. Was able to let Dom finish in time to meet with his friend for the festival. Well, well, Aiden. It looks like we are all indebted to you for your, to you for your hard work. Anyway, Eric, let's make a start. The stall won't build itself. As you command, my liege. Well then, shall we see if we can lend a hand? After all, there's not a whole lot we can do until the stall is prepared. You sure we wouldn't be getting in the way? I'm sure Lucas would reprimand us if that would, if that were the case. Let us make a start. All right, let's do this. It had taken little more than half an hour to assemble the stall and set up the various different cooking implements and tills. Lucas and his team had also prepared ingredients in bulk, having provided more than enough for us to begin. We've still got containers of ingredients back at the office. Wasn't enough room to bring everything on in one trip, but there should be enough there to get started. Indeed, Lucas, thank you for your hard work. I think what you have brought should last a few hours at least. 
Would you mind delivering the remainder at around 5 p.m.? It is rather warm today. I think it would be best if they remained refrigerated until then. That's fine. I'll meet you back here then. Thank you again, Lucas. Lucas departed with Eric in tow, leaving just the three of us at the newly assembled stall. Alright, what's the plan? Who's doing what? Well, I'd only originally planned for the two of us, but when I think about it, having three is probably for the best. We were somewhat overwhelmed last year. I remember, vividly. It sucked. And then you must also vividly recall the extra pay you received. Ain't gonna lie, probably wouldn't be here if I didn't. But wait, there's three of us. Does that mean no bonus? Ty chuckled seeing Diego's obvious concern. I suppose that all depends how hard you work. Oof, yo, Aiden. Sounds like financial blackmail. I really don't think that's financial blackmail, Diego. Anyway, returning to the matter at hand, Aiden here already knows how to operate the register. Besides, having such a handsome face at the counter can only help sales, yes? Hey, I'm handsome too, you know. Ty chuckled at Diego's outraged response as I blushed slightly in response to Ty's obvious flirt. An obvious flirt which, like so much else, seemed to have gone right over Diego's head. Of course you are, Diego. But you are also a mighty fine fry cook. Wasting your incredible talent on anything else would be such a waste. But, well, I am pretty good. I, I guess I can put those skills to work this time. I couldn't believe Diego had fallen for that. Which leaves me to assemble and plate everything. I think we will make an excellent team. Now, much like last year, we are using a customized menu for the festival. Naturally, operating out of a stall, we do not have the means to replicate that menu. Furthermore, people do not w do not want to wait 20 minutes for their meals. Our menu today is largely is largely simpler recipes that are quick to prepare, made special with our premium ingredients and masterful preparation. Ah, and it would seem people are looking forward to it. Ty pointed towards the front of the stall. Through the opening, we could see that people were steadily flooding into the festival grounds. While the festival itself hadn't begun, it seemed as though people were all keen to get in ahead of time. In addition to this, people had started forming lines at each of the stalls, with ours not, not only included, but boasting a bigger line than any of the others in sight. I feel as though it would be pertinent to make a start, yes? Diego, I expect full well that our burgers will be best sellers. We're due to open any minute, so this would be a good time to make start on the patties. Man, this already looks like it's going to be busier than last year. Shit, where's the patties? <laughs> yeah. Aiden, once the patties are almost finished, feel free to open whenever. The three of us all manned our stations in preparation for a busy shift ahead. Following Ty's instructions, I waited until the patties looked ready and removed the clothes sign from the till. The first customer came up to the window and placed his order. Then the second, then the third. I'd been working hard, serving customers for a good hour or so when I was taken by surprise when my next customer was a familiar face. Well, well, well. If it isn't, um... I, I don't think I got your name. The name is Aiden. Ah, uh, yes, how embarrassing. My apologies. Anywho, it seems to me as if you're in your element. Oh, please, all I'm doing is taking orders. I'm not doing half as much, even half as well as you. Oh, dearie me, you flatter me so. I assure you I have no intention of buttering you up. My compliment was genuine. Ah, uh, but I suppose such chatter can wait for another time. I do not wish to hold up the line. Now, correct me if I am wrong, but the nachos are a normal menu item, are they not? That's right. It's the same recipe here today. Excellent. I've been meaning to try them for some time now. I'll have one plate of those. Hot. Oh, and are you selling alcohol at the stall as well? Hot, eh? How adventurous. Only bottles. Nothing fancy, I'm afraid. A crying shame. I hear good things. I suppose a bottle of dry whiskey will have to suffice. Sure thing. I took Jay's money, handed him his drink, and submitted his order before turning back to him and realizing something. Oh, hey. There's your work clothes, are they not? So you noticed. The cafe has a stall here as well. I'm just on a short break. Decided I'd try the legendary food at Ty's. I hope we don't disappoint. I have the utmost faith you won't. Ty came up behind me, handing me a takeaway order marked Nachos Hot. I passed this to Jay, who returned with an appreciative nod. Well, that is my cue to leave. I will no doubt be seeing you around. Later. Jay waved and headed off in the direction of the cafe stall as another customer approached the counter. There was at least ten in the line at that very moment, and was showing no signs of getting any quieter. Uh, hey Ty? Yes, Diego? Is, is there another box of patties somewhere because I'm about to run out? Uh, oh, oh dear, one moment. Ty pulled his cell phone from his pocket and made a call. Lucas, I apologize for that, but we need that secondary delivery pushed forward. Yes, indeed. It would seem we are on target to easily beat last year's sales. 
Oh, I appreciate that. See you soon, old friend. Ty returned the phone to his pocket, a look of relief spread across his face. Apologies to you both, we are busier than I expected. Lucas will be around with the second batch of ingredients. The three of us all returned to our stations, comforted by the knowledge that we weren't about to run out of food to sell. But alas, we were mistaken. Lucas had arrived and delivered the remainder of our supplies, but as the queues kept building, those ingredients began to run out as well. It was now several hours later. Half our menu had to be marked as sold out. The majority of the drinks in our fridge were gone as well, with only some unpopular brands of soda and a bitter imported beer remaining. As a consequence of this, as well as the time and overall winding down of the festival, for the first time in six hours, there was no queue at our stall. Ty was somewhat upset by this, but neither Diego or I seemed, nor I seemed to mind one bit. Man, thank goodness. Another hour of that and I'd have lost my damn mind. I don't think I've ever worked that hard in my life. You both did wonderful. I could not have predicted we would have been that busy. However, much like last year, I simply did not prepare enough food. Hey, think about it this way. At least there won't be as m there won't be much wastage, right? Heck, even looks like we managed to sell a few of those beers that have been sitting in the fridges forever. I feel somewhat bad that they are the only alcoholic beverage we have left. I guess it says a lot that even then we did not manage to sell our stock. <laughs> I remember you gave me one as a reward once. I think I took one sip and threw the bottle out. That shit is nasty. I still don't forgive you for that. It was worth a try, was it? No, was it not? Say it. Would you like a bottle in the house? Yeah, I think I'll pass. <laughs> I am not surprised in the slightest, although you do deserve a reward. Both of you do. While not everything went perfectly to plan, we managed to increase on last year's sales by a whopping 40%. Nice. Hell yeah. Aiden, would you like to finish up and see the festival before everything closes up? It is your first time, and I would loathe for you to miss it. I appreciate the offer, but, uh, thought about Ty's offer for a moment. As much as I wanted to see the festival, Diego had worked the previous year as well. It made more sense if he got to go. Of course, that wasn't the only reason. If Diego were to go, Ty and I would be alone together. An opportunity too good to pass up. I think Diego should go. He worked last year, after all. Yo, you sure, dude? That was very generous of you, Aiden. If you are both in agreement, I would be happy for Diego to go instead. Go for it, Diego. Enjoy the festival. Thanks, dude. And you too, Ty. I'll be expecting my bonus in the mail. Ty chuckled as Diego waved goodbye to both of us before leaving the stall and disappearing into the crowds. Well, that leaves just us, then. So it does. Gotta admit, though, surprised you offered to let me go instead of Diego. Ah, but it went exactly as planned. After your insistence on being here in the first place, I did not expect you to simply walk away. Ah, smart. Why the bluff, though? I suppose I wanted to see it for myself, confirm that theory of mine. I'm glad I was right. Anyway, we don't have much left to sell, but we may well, but we may as well remain open for another hour or so. Any objections? None. Wonderful. Oh, and discount those beers half off. I want them gone. Hold on, let me check something on here. Oh god, I still have that folder open. I have a couple things to check. Okay. Part one of Ty's route is now on YouTube. I've been, like, multitasking a bit. You're not gonna lie, I completely forgot that that was there. Next up, I need to see something on the, uh, files. So I'll do that real quick. I'm just going to see something real quick. Okay, yeah, I think I have an idea on what's going to happen. Another hour or so had passed with only a few customers visiting the stall. Despite this, I did manage to move another bottle of beer. A bottle the customer took a hearty gulp of and spat out onto the ground. Ty instructed me to begin closing up, just as three familiar faces arrived at the counter. Hey, hey, we're not too late, are we? Hey, Aiden. Evening. Hey guys, just in the nick of time, actually. We were just about to close up. Sweet. Hey Ty, don't suppose you'll sell us some leftovers cheap, would ya? I turned to look at Ty, who reluctantly sighed and nodded. Sweet, uh, damn no burgers. Um, I'll take a mild nachos. Axel? Ooh, I'll have nachos too. Make mine a burrito. Any drinks? Beers are half off. You can stick those beers straight up your ass. I'll take a soda instead. Me too. What's wrong with the beers? Dude, trust me. Just trust me. 
go for the soda. Huh. Guess I'd better make it a soda then. I grab their drinks while Ty busily prepared their orders in the background. So, you're closing up after this, right Aiden? That's the plan. Say Axel. Say, Axel and Dom and I were going to head back to Axel's place and play some video games. You should come with. That makes sense. There's four controllers after all. The more the merrier, right? Oh, um... While the proposal did sound appealing, I had something else in mind. Alas, it would be difficult to explain without spilling what was going on between Ty and me. As I awkwardly shuffled my feet thinking of an excuse, Axel and I made eye contact. The look on his face told me he understood and the wink he snuckly suggested he had a plan. Although I wasn't quite prepared for what happened next. Oh, oh no. Hmm, what is it, Axel? I, uh, I think I left the oven on. What? Seriously? Axel, you've been here for nearly eight hours. I know, isn't it terrible? We need to go, right now. My house might be on fire. You know, if there was a fire, I'm sure we'd have heard about it by now. But, but what if we didn't? Please? I'm so scared. Fine. Neither Dom nor Diego seemed to buy Axel's ter terrible excuse, but reluctantly agreed to go along with it. Dom, in particular, was clearly very suspicious, knowing Axel better than anybody and knowing how out of character this all was. Sorry, Aiden. We'll be at Axel's, assuming it ain't a crater by now. Guess we're heading off now. But might see you later. R yeah? Maybe. Good luck. Hope there's no fire. Axel winked at me once more before the three of them briskly departed in the direction of Axel's apartment. Just what on earth was that all about? <laughs> that cheat is one hell of an awful liar, but I owe him one. Oh, why so? Because now I have you all to myself. Ah, I can only assume Axel knows then. I suppose we were not all that subtle yesterday, but as much as I applaud your work ethic, I fear you may have wasted your time. What do you mean? My attention was diverted to a familiar vehicle pulling up beside our stall, with Lucas and Eric hopping out of either side once it had come to a stop. Lucas and Eric will be cleaning up and dismantling everything. There's not a whole lot for us to do. Well, you know, that isn't exactly what I had in mind. Oh, then clue me in. Just what do you have in mind? You said it yourself. Just... <laughs> Right? You said it yourself. Despite some hiccups, today was a success. I was thinking you and I could celebrate that. What do you think? You know, I quite like the sound of that. Evening. Jeez, there's nothing left. Indeed, we have sold almost everything. Today was quite a success. I'm glad to hear it. Oh, would the two of you mind terribly if we were to depart? It has been a long day. You understand? No problem. That's what you're paying for. Well, won't take us long at all to pull everything down. I'm sure there's a thing on my remote. Great. Oh, and feel free to help yourself to the beers in the fridge's things. They're on the house. Sweet, free beers. What do you say, big guy? <laughs> After we finished. Got it? Copy that. The two of them quickly got to work, cleaning up the mess, packing away the appliances, and dismantling the stall. Ty and I headed outside to resume our conversation. I can't believe you gave them those nasty beers. That's cruel, Ty. Indeed. I expect a grumpy phone call from Lucas tomorrow. Ah, well. So, any ideas where we should go to celebrate? Hmm. Well, my place is not far, and there is a bottle of aged scotch there just begging for, an for such an occasion. Bringing me back to your place already, eh? Hell, I'm down. Let's... What... Where are you two lovebirds sneaking off to, eh? For your information, we intend to celebrate the fruits of our labor. It has been a long and hard day, after all. Yeah, long and hard. I getcha. <laughs> what are you insinuating? It was merely a figure of speech. Sure, sure. Don't worry about the stall. We've got it covered. You two celebrate your heart's content. Welcome to my humble abode. Please make yourself at home. This was the first time I'd seen Ty's house. Admittedly, I was impressed, although I don't honestly know quite what I expected. It was clear that Ty had money. The house was sizable, modern, and filled with nice things. Through the window, I could even see a swimming pool. Damn, this place is real nice, Ty. You've even got a pool. Jealous. Years of hard work have paid off. I've given something of a... I have something of a home gym downstairs as well, although I hardly mean to boast. Explains why you're in such fantastic shape. Why, thank you. Your compliment means a lot. Now. Ty made his way into the kitchen and retrieved an expensive-looking bottle and two glasses from a cabinet before filling those glasses with ice, adding the contents of the bottle, and then returning to the living room with both glasses in hand. Ty passed the first of these glasses to me with a smile and held his up expectantly. Which one? 
Because either way, it's going to be awkward as hell. Oh ho! Ty seems somewhat taken aback to my by my toast. To us then. Eh, don't worry about it. But he hardly seemed against the idea either. We clinked our glasses together before each taking a sip. <laughs> it tasted almost like a sort of straight gasoline. Looking up at Ty, I met his expectant gaze and forced a smile. Well, what do you think? It's uh, lovely. Please, any simpleton can see you have yet to develop a taste for it. That is Paul, alright. We have plenty of time. This is only the finest Scotch whiskey. A bottle of this goes for thousands. I've been saving it for special occasions such as this. Th thousands? Jeez, are you sure the occasion is worth it? This bottle was a gift, so if your concern is that you are sipping away at my hard-earned money, you can relax. And yes, I assure you the occasion is well worth it. After all, I am in terrific company. I couldn't help but smile at Ty's remark as I took another sip of my whiskey. Ah, oh, man. Permit me to fetch you a little, fetch you something a little easier to drink. Ty departed for the kitchen once more, fetching a bottle of tropical cider from his fridge along with two new glasses before returning to his position on the couch. Here we are. I think you'll find this more agreeable. Be sure to take it easy, though. It will sneak up on you. Ty filled my glass, which I grabbed and drank all, drinking one big gulp, all the while holding eye, eye contact with Ty's surprised face. You were saying? Not letting me get the better of him, Ty followed suit, downing his glass in one as well. This is a dangerous game you're playing, Aiden. You say it as you say that as though you mind. Oh, not one bit. But if that is that is the way things are going, neither of us will be in any state to take you home. Perhaps that's all part of my master plan. I never knew you were so cunning. I must admit, I enjoyed a great deal. I reached over and picked up the bottle of cider, pouring another glass for each of us before turning to my position and with mine. Ty obliged, picking up his glass and taking several swigs. A dangerous game indeed. You realize you are rostered on at the bar tomorrow, yes? Uh oh. Ty chuckled heartily before resuming the conversation with a warm smile. Ah, uh, but worry not. Truth be told, I find the trajectory of this encounter to be quite intriguing, and I am most excited to see where it leads. Please take tomorrow off. I will manage. Are you sure? I wouldn't want to let you down. Certain. I have made my choice. Please do not worry about it. I feel a little guilty, but uh, I'll take your word for it. Please do. So tell me. You worked for the company that developed our point-of-sale software, did you not? How was it? Oh, that? Absolutely horrendous. I was living in the big city, working more than full-time hours and only putting away two dollars above minimum wage. Two dollars? Surely that cannot be right. I kid you not, I was living in a studio apartment, super rundown, two-thirds of my paycheck. The pipes rattled and leaked, the floorboards creaked, and I got a mouthful of dust whenever the neighbors upstairs went at it. I was one of a batch of seven hired straight out of university. They called it an internship and told us how lucky we were to even be getting that. I remember one of the guys in my group confronted our boss on that. He was like, we've got rent to pay, food to buy, student loans to pay off. How are we supposed to survive in the heart of the city on that kind of money? What did he say? He wanted this big rant about our entitled generation, about how we don't know how good we have it, that we're lucky to have these opportunities. I- wow. That guy walked right there. Our group had dwindled to three within a month. We have- we all had degrees. We'd spent years in the university learning the skills, only to live in poverty and squalor as soon as we got out. Barring my student loan, I had no other debt. For most of the year, I ate one meal every two days. It was all I could afford. I was a tad chubby back in uni. Not anymore. I was late on most of my bills, just not enough money coming in. My credit rating is shot. If I'd spent another month in that situation, I'd probably have declared bankruptcy. It was that bad. 
I'm sorry to hear that. Things are tough, especially in the big city. And things certainly are not made easier by those exploiting the youth. It's alright. Kinda sucks I'm not using my degree, but, well, I've only been here, what, a week? I'm happier now than I've been in a long, long time. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Diego is not using his degree either, it seems. I know he had some doubts about moving to Woodcrest, but having heard your story, I can tell he made the right decision. Though it shocks me that I pay more than an international software conglomerate, conglomerate pays their new, in, their new grad interns. I run a bar. It tells you all you need to know about that company. Perhaps when the contract expires, I should look into the competition. And then he dropped the ice all over the floor, and when he went to clean them up, he slipped over. <laughs> what a klutz. Between us both, things were going incredibly well. We both had talked about ourselves, our past, our goals for the future, and on top of that, the alcohol was settling in nicely. Perhaps too nicely, considering my noticeably slurred speech. All the while, Ty claimed to be similar, similarly impaired, and yet he barely betrayed any sign of his intoxication. This, this was a good idea. Thank you for suggesting this, Aiden. Oh, and that reminds me. I reached into his pocket and took several bills out of his wallet, handing them to me. What's this? A bonus, or a tip, if you will, for your hard work. And worry not, Diego will be receiving one, too. I counted out the notes. There's $300 here. Th that's a big tip. Of course, I would not think to shortchange you. But, you know, I was kind of hoping for another big tip, if you uh, catch my drift. I am slightly disappointed you would stoop so low, Aiden. I was kicking myself. That was terrible. Surely it wouldn't work. Such a dreadful pun, you should be ashamed. <gasps> Time to hide the screen! <laughs> I think y'all know what's going to happen. Ty chuckled heartily, a laugh I returned half-heartedly, still uncertain of how my daring flirt landed. Although I must concede that it sounds like the perfect way to end such a wonderful night, that is, if you are similarly on board. I was in disbelief. There was no way that worked. Simply no way. Then again, considering the rate at which things had been moving, perhaps I shouldn't have been surprised. Uh, oh, you're serious? Um... Not knowing how else to respond, I sheepishly nodded. With a smile, Ty stood up, my heart turning a somersault as he... I felt a touch foolish, foolish feeling so nervous, but you reap what you sow, as they say. I truly wanted this, even if the prospect was as scary as it was exciting. Yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to show any of this, but... Yeah. Again, releasing the... I'm, I'm not even going to read this. But let's just say, modern one who, I guess. They made a fucking pun. God, is it interactive? I'm just going to turn this off. Oh my god. Uh,
If someone had told me only days prior this would happen, I would have I would certainly call their bluff. I s <laughs> I've taken the liberty of leaving some fresh clothes for you to wear. I only hope that they will fit you properly. I have left your belongings in the lounge along with a small gift. When you leave, please turn the switch on the front door so it will lock on your departure. I sincerely hope you have an enjoyable morning and know that I am looking forward to seeing you again soon. My curiosity was piqued as to what Ty's gift would be. However, the disco- <laughs> Ty's shower was operated by a touchscreen control panel with a confusing array of buttons and gauges. Fortunately, after only a short while while fussing with the controls, the shower took pity on me, turning itself on. Thankfully, the temperature was perfect. I did not wish to make any adjustments and risk switching it back off by mistake. A lucky fluke indeed. It's bad. <laughs> and when I doubted I would be able to replicate, easily replicate in the future, I stood beneath the cascading water for what seemed like an eternity. My mind never... Ugh. <sighs> I was hopelessly attracted to Ty's maturity, refined taste, and discipline. He was kind, experienced, empathetic, and thoughtful. There was certainly a significant age gap between us, but this only strengthened my desire for him. My respect for him. My longing. Oh yeah, by the way, we're on day eight. I couldn't think of a time in my life where I was more excited for something than I was in that very moment. I couldn't wait to see what would happen next. I left the shower, finding a small pile of clothes Ty had left me. They emitted a slight... Oh wait, sorry. They emitted a slightly musty aroma, as though they'd been sitting in a cupboard for many years. I threw them on, and to my shock, they fit me surprisingly well. There was a small bottle of cologne on the vanity. Unable to resist, I applied Ty's cologne to my wrists and neck before inhaling deeply. Cinnamon and coconut. Now, Ty's scent would follow me for the rest of the day, and I couldn't have been happier about that. And turning to the bedroom, I looked over towards Ty's bed. The sheets were to say... I decided to take the initiative and approach the bed, pulling his sheets loose and removing the covers from his duvet and pillows. Piling them up and taking... Then with me as I ventured deeper into Ty's house in search of his laundry. Eventually I located it, tucked away behind a door next to his kitchen. He had an expensive and large washing machine, which doubled as a clothes dryer. Perfect. I tossed the bedding in and added detergent and softener. Alas, I was considerably less successful in actually getting the washer to start. After five minutes without, the su without success, I admitted to... I decided to admit defeat, abandoning the task. At the very least, the load of washing would be ready to go for when Ty returned home later in the evening. As I answered... As I entered, I noticed a tote bag atop the counter. Looking inside, I saw my dirty clothes from the day prior folded neatly within. Beside the bag was a plate wrapped with foil and a small note on top. Not unlike wrap unwrapping a gift, I, I excitedly peeled the foil from the plate. Carefully stacked atop the plate were several buttermilk pancakes, expertly cooked and near perfectly round. Beside them lay a small container filled to the room with what looked like... No way. I dipped my finger in the syrup and then licked it clean. It was the unmistakable taste of passion fruit. I felt my tail begin wagging involuntarily as I grabbed the note from atop the foil. It read, There's a tub of vanilla ice cream on the top shelf of the freezer. Enjoy. Okay, we can show it again because it's safe. It's been safe, but I didn't know if anything would pop up. Overcome with anticipation, I grabbed the ice cream from the freezer and scooped some out, depositing it atop my still warm pancakes before covering everything in syrup and digging in. It was better than I remembered, no doubt owing to, to Ty's culinary prowess. I was awestruck, from the handwritten notes to the fresh clothes to having collected my own clothes for me, and even prepared my favorite breakfast based on little more than a throwaway comment several days prior. This is a man I wanted to spend my life with. I was so impressed, so taken aback, my tail continued to wag. The pace accelerating to a brisk repetition and my smile grew only wider. Eventually, my breakfast was finished and I found myself somewhat heartbroken by the fact. Despite this, I knew that this would be the be first in a long line of wonderful meals Ty would prepare. A thought that quickly returned me to my prior state of barely contained joy. I placed my plate and utensils in Ty's dishwasher and returned the ice cream to the freezer. I thought about leaving Ty a note thanking him for breakfast and informing him what I'd done with his bed sheets before deciding against this. I was going to pay him a visit instead. Seeing no further reason to linger, I grabbed the tote bag containing my clothing and headed to the front door, making sure to flick the switch so it would be locked on my departure before finally passing through. And thus I departed Ty's house. It was a beautiful day, the warmth of the sun reflecting my upbeat mood. 
Once more, I failed to resist the influence of my emotions, my tail wagging as I walked. I would have looked silly where anyone had seen, or anyone to have seen, but I didn't care. I was in love, and nothing could take that away from me. I reached the curb in front of Ty's house and pondered whether to head directly to the bar or to kill some time beforehand. Looking west, I noticed a collection of dark clouds on the horizon, juxtap juxtaposed against the clear skies directly overhead. It would be a terrible shame were they to venture in this direction. <laughs> Let me get a drink of yum yum water real quick. Okay, Wait, where are we going to? Are we going to uh, Axel or Ty? It was bad. The scene was bad. Like, I had to, like, mute the uh, audio. It was that bad. <laughs> Upon leaving Ties, I checked my phone to receive a recent text message from Axel. Red, I'm bored. Dom's working. I'm gonna go swimming in the river near the North Bridge. Want to come? It seemed like a shame to waste this fantastic weather by heading straight to the bar without delay. Besides, Tao would be working the rest of the day. There was no rush. I texted back agreeing to Axel's invitation for heading in the direction of the North Bridge. So, uh, so what? You know, you and Ty. How'd things go? It was a touch embarrassing to admit how well things had gone. I thought carefully about my next words, alas my tail began violently thrashing the surface of the water and my cheeks slid up over rosy red, undermining my attempt with an obvious response. <laughs> your body tells a different story. Damn it. That's so cute. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. I, I mean, um, about that, um, all of a sudden Axel started acting kind of weird. I talked it up to nerves and decided to let it slide. Hey, uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, things went really well. I'm kind of head over heels. It's a little embarrassing. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. I'm really happy for you. I hope, it, I hope I get to find out what that feels like someday. You will. You're a great guy. Wouldn't be surprised if you had people crushing on you right now across town. Uh, oh, um, I, I don't know about that, but thanks. Yeah. I'm smart this time, so I'm just gonna bring that up. That's right, so tell me, Aiden, how, uh... How... D oh, um... Keeping Eric someone in the dark seemed like a smart move. After all, he wasn't known for his restraint. It, uh, yeah, it was nice. Nice, eh? Y yeah, we had a few drinks, talked about ourselves, and... What? Then... Then you fucked like rabbits, right? E Eric! H hey, that... Holy shit, you did too. Spill it out every... I'm not going to read this because... Aaron, Eric's persistent vulgarity seemed to be making Axel uncomfortable, and I'd have been lying if I said I wasn't feeling somewhat, un somewhat similarly myself. I decided to try and change the topic. I, uh, I'll tell you another time. Ah, right. Don't want to rob the poor cheat of his innocence, eh? A lot of this we've read before. Well, he's my best friend, but you're kind of dating your boss, which is... Yeah, I guess we're both crossing some boundaries, huh? Do you do you think things will work out between you two? I'm certain it will. He's amazing, and I have a great feeling about it. 
I understand. If it works out for you two, maybe it'll work out for Dom and me. I should be getting moving. Getting moving. I've still got something I need to do. Right. Okay. I finally arrived at the bar where Ty was serving several customers drinks from behind the bar. He was so focused on his tax that he didn't immediately notice my arrival. When he did, a look of surprise briefly crashed across his face before settling into a wide toothy grin. Ah, Aiden, what what are you doing here? I did not expect to see you again so soon. Ha, you almost sound disappointed. And here I was thinking we had a good night. Uh, oh, I oh dear, I apologize. That was not my intention. Of course, it is a tremendous joy to have you present. Relax, I was only kidding. Ah, thank goodness. I must say, you look much striking in those old clothes. It is almost like bearing witness to a younger version of myself, but surely much less handsome, am I right? On the contrary, you are the very picture of good looks, to a degree I could never dream of matching. But, flirtatious banter aside, I apologize. Things are a little busy right now, and I must not allow myself to be distracted. I pondered for a moment. I had my work gear with me. Alas, it wasn't quite so fresh. Nonetheless, I, f if I felt good. Hell, great even, and I expected that I'd come to feel even better working alongside my new favorite person. Got a spare uniform by any chance? Oh? Whatever for? I'll help. I was supposed to be working today anyway. If you've got something I can wear, I'm good to go. Ah, uh, make no mistake. I greatly appreciate the gesture, but I will manage. It was an eventful night last night, after all. You no doubt need your rest. What? And you didn't have an eventful night? You don't seriously expect me to let you do this alone, do you? Please, it is quite alright. I- Let me rephrase. I am helping you whether you like it or not. We're in this together, I don't want you to argue. Ty sighed before holding up his hands in surrender, a grateful smile with a gentle twist of guilt adorning his handsome features. I appreciate it, although I cannot help but feel guilt. I gave you the day off, after all. Please, I don't want you overworking yourself, you hear? Says you. How long has it been since you had a day off? Touché. Thank you, Aiden. You are most kind. There's a spare set of clothes out back that should fit you, if you'd like to get changed. Damn right I would. I won't be long. I headed out back and located the spare uniform, quickly changing into it before returning to the floor and commencing work. It was just as well that I'd been insistent. As the day drew on, the bar only got busier and busier, and there was no way... And there was no way Ty would have been able to handle it alone. The two of us worked closely with one another, performing our tasks, serving the patrons, and helping out one an another, and helping out one another out to the best of our abilities. As it would happen, we worked even more efficiently together than we had the night before, no doubt owing to the advances in our relationship with one another. Finally, as the night drew on and the skies grew dark, our workload gradually dwindled, allowing the both of us to catch our breath. When the clock eventually chimed 10 p.m., it was with a sense of relief that we closed up shop and locked the doors. My goodness, things got a little carried away there, did they not? Heh, <laughs> story of our lives, right? Yeah, indeed, I appreciate you being here. I'm sorry if I seemed reluctant. It was only out of concern for you. I know, but you needn't worry. Working or not, I got to spend time with you. There's honestly nowhere else I'd rather have been. I, I see. Ty appeared somewhat melancholic, having heard my response. He gazed off into the distance, no doubt deeply in thought. Hey, what's on your mind? Oh, Ty suddenly snapped back to attention. It was nothing, do not worry. Are you sure? Didn't look like nothing. I took a seat at the vacant bar as Ty stood opposite me, drying freshly washed glasses and putting them away beneath the counter before responding to my question. Well, you see, I, I was planning on taking part in the Woodcrest Combat Tournament this year. Have you heard of it? Uh, I don't think so. What's that? Well, you see, every year a tournament is held. It's an official thing, sanctioned by city officials and all that. It is open to any style of unarmed combat so long as certain rules are followed. Wow, I never pictured you as a fighter. These muscles are not just for show, I can assure you. I participated last year, not for the cash prize or anything else, but as a test of my abilities, and perhaps there was somebody else trying to impress too. Oh, now I'm intrigued. Alas, I did not do quite as well as I'd hoped, which was certainly a disappointment, although I managed to catch that certain someone's attention, so I suppose that was a victory in itself. But I am getting off topic. My point is that the tournament's starting, starting very soon. When I reserved my place several months ago, I had hoped to improve upon my previous performance and impress this person once more. But, well, that motivation has lost all meaning in the time since, and the cash prize means very little to me. I'd rather spend my time doing other things, I suppose. I see. I suppose I can't blame you for that. Who was this person, if I might ask? A dear friend, whose opinion once meant, once meant the world for, to me. Once? Yes, things are different now. I do not suppose you know anybody who would like to take my place in the tournament, would you? Diego participated last year. Perhaps he would like to do so again. Would you care to ask him on my behalf? Oh, sure thing. I'll ask him when I see him next. Thank you. A place in the tournament is hard to get... It's hard to get, as numbers are strictly limited. It would be a terrible shame for it to go to waste. I understand. I'll do what I can. 
Ty smiled and went back to drying glasses, leaving the two of us suspended in an awkward silence. I watched closely as Ty went about his business, and he noticed he was avoiding eye and noticed he was avoiding eye contact. I realized in that moment that the tournament was not to the extent of what was on his mind. Something is what something was up, and I intended to get to the bottom of it. Hey, Ty. Oh, yes. Whatever it was, it was something Ty was reluctant to talk about. I hadn't known Ty for long, Ty for long, but what I did know is that he would likely skirt around the topic unless confronted directly. I had to be assertive. I sat up straight and cleared my throat. I know the tournament isn't the only thing on your mind. It's obvious something is bothering you. Oh, it is quite alright, I assure you. Nothing to worry about. Now that's bullshit, and I know that's bullshit. I know we haven't known each other long, but I want you to feel as though you can confide in me. Things have been moving really fast, but I think they've been amazing personally. But it's super important that we're able to communicate when something is up, relevant or otherwise. I know there's something on your mind, and I won't force you, but I would really like, like it if you could trust me enough to talk to me about it. Ty let out another deep sigh before resting his glass and rag on the counter and making his way around the bar, eventually sitting on the stool immediate to my left. I apologize, you are right, that I have something on my mind, and that I should be able to talk to you about it. I suppose I just wanted to let it stew a little. I did not want to discuss feelings that were half-baked. I am sure you understand. I do, and I don't hold that against you. I was curious. He mentioned feelings. Had he fallen for me just like I had fallen for him? Perhaps he was worried I didn't feel the same way. Or perhaps he was worried about how things had gone the night before, that perhaps I had regrets. Perhaps Ty wanted to make things official, and was worried that desire wasn't mutual? I suppose the joke would be on him. I was on board with all of it. In such short time, I had come to love this man. There wasn't anything I wouldn't do. This is difficult. I need a moment to collect my thoughts. It was kind of adorable to see Ty acting so shy about all of this. It was unlike him, considering how perceptive he seemed to be. Surely he could see that I felt the same way. Surely he could. Unless. I, I suppose I'd start... I had best start by saying that I'm sorry. But what do you mean? Sorry about what? I Well, I feel as though we have gotten a little carried away. Oh, last night, right? Don't worry. Honestly, I had such a great time. Yeah, things definitely went a long way, but I loved every minute of it, I promise. Oh, well, yes, that is one thing. Although I'm glad you have no regrets. I don't. Not a single one. Honestly, I'm more bored, no, more on board than ever. Oh, that reminds me. I want to say thanks for collecting up my stuff and making me breakfast. I still can't, I can't believe you made my favorite pancakes. Ah, I'm glad that you enjoyed them. I was going to wash the bed sheets as well, but I couldn't get your washer to start for some reason. Either way, everything is loaded and ready in the washer for when you get home. We sure made a mess. But thank you. You did not need to. Please, it is, it is the least I can do. I... Please, just stop for a moment. I suddenly halted our conversation. I suppose it had gotten a little one-sided. I was trying to let my feelings rise to the surface in the hope it would make Ty more comfortable sharing his. Little did I realize I had only made things more difficult for us both. I, this thing between us, it has been a lot of fun, and I'm glad that you agree. But I felt my heart seize in my chest in fear of what Ty would say next. I had horribly misjudged the situation, and now I was racing for impact. I worry that I've been making a terrible mistake. I didn't know what to say. A mistake? What mistake? Did he think that... We were a mistake? Oh dear, I, I wish I had more time to think of what I wanted to say to you. Things have been challenging as of late. There's been this awful lot on my mind, you see. And that night when this all began, I thought that this would be a good thing for me. It is hard to explain. I felt like things were stagnant. And that having something to focus on, or work towards, to look forward to, I felt as though maybe it was what I needed. I hope you realize how incredibly vague you're being. I do, and I'm sorry. Unfortunately, there are some things I just cannot share with you. It is not by choice, but rather by, by necessity. I hope that you understand. I felt tears begin to well up in my eyes as Ty continued. Anyway, it is not that I have not enjoyed this. It is not that I do not like you. I want to assure you that you have done nothing wrong whatsoever. And for what little it may be worth at this point, I'll be lying if I, s if I said that what you have been feeling is not mutual. But you see, that is precisely why this conversation is happening. Because the last thing I want is to begin a relationship on false pretenses. To begin a relationship with so much baggage and dirty laundry. To lead you on and to hurt you because of things happening in my life. Ty's words remain notoriously vague. But I felt as though I understood the gist of what he was trying to convey. There was something in his life, either incredible, something that happened recently or still happening, that had not made things incredibly complicated. Assuming he was telling the truth, he had developed feelings for me as well. But alas, these circumstances had become a problem for him. I understood these things. What I didn't yet understand was what this, what his proposed solution was going to be. 
So, where do we stand then? Is this... Are you suggesting we should stop seeing each other? Ty looked down at his feet. His eyes similarly damp to my own. As much as this hurt me, I could see this was hurting him as well. It was for that reason I trusted him. For that reason I knew he was going... He was doing this for the right reasons. I... I do not know. I so desperately want to say no, but... Would it be okay if I asked for some time? How long do you think you will need? I cannot rightly say, but the fact of the matter is that we work together. You are rostered on Come Tuesday. We will inevitably be seeing, seeing one another then anyway. I cannot promise I'll have an answer by then, but I can promise that I'll spend every waking moment beforehand trying to find it. I stood up from the stool in preparation to leave. I didn't know what else could be said. I was obviously upset and hated that things had gone this way. But nonetheless, I saw no reason not to trust Ty. Even if he wasn't forthcoming with specific details, I believed what he'd said was genuine. W wait Ty also got up from his stool and quickly pulled me into a tight hug. I was surprised at first, but nonetheless wrapped my arms around him and returned his hug. I am so sorry. I hope you can forgive me. Just promise me you'll keep me in the loop, okay? I promise. As Ty released me, I reached down to the floor where I'd left the tote bag containing my clothes and grabbed it. Having no other business to attend to, I turned to leave and took several steps towards the door before remembering one thing I had forgotten. Um, is it okay if I get these clothes back to you on Tuesday, then? I appreciate the thought, but I'd like for you to keep them. They are of no use to me. They simply no longer fit. And, well, I mean what I said. They suit you. I nodded to which Ty delivered a smile I could only describe as brave. He was hurting, but nonetheless he smiled. Following his example, I did the same before turning away once more and making my way out of the bar. Forgive me, Aiden. I've been such a fool. Let's just take a moment. Uh. <laughs> the walk home felt as though it had taken an eternity. The very same rain clouds I'd spotted that morning had taken residence immediately above Woodcrest. It was poignant. It was poignant. As though the weather sought to directly reflect how I had felt at, cer at particular points throughout the day. Ty's hand-me-down clothes was dripping wet with the rain, leaving a trail behind me and generating a small puddle beneath my feet where I stood in the door to the living room. Diego, who had been lazing on the couch, had noticed my presence, sitting up to greet me. Jeez, dude, there you are. I've been wondering where you'd gotten off to. I... Uh... Of course, the rain could do little to hide the fact that I'd been crying. My eyes were no doubt puffy and red, my tail dangling limply between my legs and my ears hung low. It simply couldn't have been more obvious. Dude, are you- what happened? I didn't know how to respond. I hadn't been upfront with Diego about what I had been doing, and in retrospect, my reasons for doing so seemed wrong. I felt incredibly foolish standing there as though I were some lost puppy. Without saying anything, I forced a smile, not unlike the one Ty had given not that long beforehand. I took a seat next to Diego on the couch, dripping every step of the way. I, uh, I got rained on. Yeah, no shit. Diego sized me up, my leg clearly failing to convince him. Honestly, I never really thought that it would. I just, hell, I didn't rightly know where to begin. Alright, so that's how you're gonna be, huh? That's cool, I can play that game. You, uh, didn't come home last night. Yeah, um, I ended up going back to Ty's instead. I spent the night there. Despite everything, I had no intention of keeping anything from Diego. I guess it just seemed easier in that moment to let him steer the conversation. I see. Diego looked closely at the logo on my shirt. It read Woodcrest High School, Class of 99. Class of 99, eh? Could have fooled me. He looks so young. Diego's suspicious expression gave gave way to a more upbeat one. Perhaps he was trying to lighten the mood. Perhaps he sensed that I was being honest with him. It was such a stupid joke, but I couldn't help but crack a smile and fire back at the joke of my own. My fur conditioner has tea tree in it. Keeps me looking young. Would you like to try it? There's that smile. Jeez, I didn't expect it to be so easy. When you walked in, I feared the worst. I can't help it. Your jokes are seriously that dumb. You're one to talk, since when have you even used conditioner? Back in uni, you always used to swear by your flawless husky genetics. Hey, don't dig up my past cringe, that's not fair. But you're smiling, right? Hate to admit that you're right. Anyway, I didn't bring any clean clothes with me, so Ty let me have some of his old ones. Class of 99. That must make him, what, 40 or something? Hmm. But that's right, last year he was in the combat tournament and he fought, a fought around on his 38th birthday. 38? Jeez, he looks good for 38. Haha, <laughs> gay. What? He does! <laughs> Look at you squirm. Oh, 
Isn't the tournament supposed to be, like, really soon? Hmm. Diego seemed to process something complicated in his head. I could practically see equations floating in the air around him. Almost like one of those crazy forensic shows where they do hashtag the science. Damn, you know what? You're right, time flies when you're dating an asshole, I guess, huh? Heh, <laughs> so it does. That means Ty's birthday is really soon, right? You don't know what day? Do the fights happen on the same dates every year? Nah, they change a bit. Always the same month, mind you, but never the same dates. Hmm. Why, planning on throwing the guy a birthday party? I hope you're planning on inviting me. I don't know. Yeah, probably best you don't. I remember my leaving party at uni. Oh god, please don't remind me. You printed the wrong date on the invitation so nobody came. You then got super drunk and cried about it for like three hours. I felt my face turn beet red. As much as I hated to admit it, Diego's retelling of the events was not inaccurate. Thankfully, you were only one day out. Had to reschedule some things, but it turned out to be a great party in the end. See, it all worked out. Maybe I should throw him a party. You better double check those invitations. Oh, shut the hell up. <laughs> okay, that reminds me. The combat tournament. Ty said you fought last year too, right? Oh, yep, I did. Didn't get as far as I'd have liked, though. Ty said more or less the same thing. Anyway, Ty has a spot this year, but he's decided against competing. He wanted me to ask you if you wanted this place. Uh, dude? Ty poked- Diego poked his belly several times with his finger, causing it to wobble slightly as he did. I am so out of shape, it ain't even funny. I wouldn't stand a chance in hell. You've got pretty big arms, though. I bet you're still plenty strong. If you started training now, who knows, maybe you could win the thing. Sounds like a heap of work. Thanks for asking, dude, but nah, I can't be asked in the slightest. Alright, fair enough. I found my blood freeze cold as my phone buzzed within my pocket. Sure, Diego had lightened the mood, but the fact that Ty could have been the source of the message filled me with a sense of dread. I reached in, grabbed my phone, and woke it up. One new message from Lucas. I felt somewhat relieved. While I suppose a part of me was disappointed that it wasn't from Ty, perhaps it was for the best. The message read, I could use your help tomorrow morning if you aren't busy. Let me know. I responded, confirming my attendance before returning my phone to my pocket. Who was that? Lucas. Guess I'm working with him tomorrow. Oh hey, I wonder if he'd take Ty's place in the tournament. Knowing how close Ty and him are, I'm sure he's already been asked. Besides, as much as Lucas knocks Eric around, he's actually kind of a gentle dude. Really? You never know it. I guess Eric just sort of pushes him to that point. Yep, honestly, I feel sorry for Lucas. Eric is more than a handful. Anyway, I was meaning to ask. Hmm? Diego leaned close to me and began to sniff the fur on my neck. Kinda weirded out by this, I recoiled away from him suddenly. Hey, w what the hell? I knew it. You mostly just smell of wet dog. No offense, but I knew I caught a whiff of something else. You're wearing Ty's cologne. I didn't respond immediately. While I wasn't intending to lie to Diego, I felt a knot in my chest thinking of the right thing to say. You, uh, want to tell me about it? Uh, I, I, I felt my face go bright red once more. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll stop. As fun as it is to make you squirm like this, I think I'm going to take pity on you. Uh-oh. You looked so sad when you walked in, after all. Besides, you're my best friend. Can't bully you. Can't rightly bully you too much now, can I? So, uh, yeah. You think I don't know, but I know, dude. Wait, what? <laughs> Seriously, you knew and you've just been fucking with me? Guilty. God damn it, Diego, you ass. <laughs> Sorry, I was just having too much fun. Wait, how long have you known? How long have you been keeping this act up for? Oh, don't worry, this is the first time I've seen you since I found out. Remember how Axel, Dom, and I all left the festival together? No way. Did Axel tell you? Well, not exactly. Back to day seven. So, I don't know if you remember, but Axel started acting real weird all of a sudden and started saying he left his oven on or something. So we double-timed it back to his apartment. When we arrived... Oh, thank goodness I didn't leave it on after all. I'm so relieved. Axel had basically run the entire way home. Dom didn't have much trouble keeping up. Guys run like marathons and shit, but me? Man, I could have curled up and died after that. So, you mean to tell me that we ran all this way for nothing? Sorry, but all is well that ends well, right? My apartment is safe. And now that we're all here, we can play some video games. Who wants to play some mi Dude, gotta say, I ain't the best judge of character and all that, but you're acting kinda shady. Who, me? No, <laughs> I'm just happy that my stuff is okay. Can you imagine how much it'd suck if it wasn't? Dude. Come on, let's fire up a match. Sorry, Axel, but Diego has a point. What do you mean? <laughs> I've known you for a long time now. I know when you're hiding something, and the fact that Diego has spotted it, you're doing a terrible job of hiding it. No offense, Diego. Uh, none taken, I guess. You guys are so silly. You're imagining things. 
Sorry, Axel, we're not buying it. Diego? Hmm. Let's leave Axel here with his secrets. We've got better things to do, right? We do? I mean, yeah, we do. Let's go. Dom and I headed for the front door as Axel fidgeted in place. It was only when Dom reached for the handle that Axel cracked. Wait, I, I'm sorry. Gonna tell us what's going on? Y yeah, just please don't go. I followed Dom's lead as he retraced his steps, eventually sitting down on Axel's couch. I was just sort of following his lead, you know? Dom knew what he was doing, so I sat beside him. Then Axel sat down too, looking kind of defeated. I seemed to remember him muttering something. I didn't quite catch it at first, but later on it sort of clicked. Under his breath he said, I'm sorry Aiden, forgive me. Hmm, did you say something? No. Well, tell us what this is all about. Uh, um, I, I didn't leave the oven on. I mean, duh, dude, we checked that when we came in. I mean, I never thought I did either. I, um, haven't used it in like a week. So, got to promise to keep this a secret, okay? Okay. Sure thing, dude, promise. Um, so, it's about Aiden and Ty. What about them? Um, they're sort of seeing each other. Oh, I, I see. I, uh, maybe this is kind of weird, dude, but, uh... Wait, they're fucking what? Uh huh? Whoa, Diego, keep it down. Wait, 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 wait. I guess there were signs beforehand. Huh. I just, I guess I'm oblivious to that sort of thing. You're telling me, Aiden is gay? Um, yeah. Hold on, that's what you're focusing on here? Uh, yeah, I had no idea. I mean, I guess, shit, man, that makes our university years kind of weird in hindsight. It's not as though there weren't signs, the way he dresses, the way he walks. Y yeah, but I don't notice that sort of shit. You're gay, aren't you? Hell, I'm bi, is that so weird? Wait, you're bi? Holy shit, Diego, seriously? <laughs> this is kind of funny. Gotta admit, it kind of is. H hey, no fair! <laughs> Shut up, stop ganging up on me! So, yeah, that's how I found out. You seriously never noticed. Seriously? Not you two. You've literally been teasing me since I got home. Let me have this. I mean, glossing over the fact that I kind of admitted my own sexuality in that story, I mean, unless you already knew. I tried to think of a witty response but came up blank. Truthfully, I'd had some suspicions over the years but never anything concrete. Then again, Diego didn't exactly seem the type, so maybe it wasn't so bad. Yeah, okay, I admit. It's news to me, but how Dom know? I mean, he knew my ex pretty well. Well, I guess that explains it then. But I guess I should have expected this to happen when I saw Axel's terrible acting at the festival last night. And come to think of it, I met up with him earlier and he acted a little strangely there. I guess he was feeling guilty or something. He didn't do a good job of hiding it. <laughs> Seriously, dude? You picked the wrong guy to trust in keeping a secret. It's not like I told him, but when he asked me for help with something and I turned up with Ty, he kind of figured it out from there. Oh, right, that must have been after you two got breakfast together that morning. Man, I knew that excuse of yours sound fishy. I can't believe I didn't see it. Eh, never mind. It ain't important, I guess. Diego went quiet, went quiet, seemingly thinking of the right words to say. I knew what was rattling around in his head. After all, it wasn't that long ago I'd walked in looking like a complete shambles. It was no surprise Diego was working his way towards that. You want to know what happened, right? Why you needed to cheer me up in the first place? Um, yeah, no pressure, of course. Like, I know I wasn't supposed to find out about this, but, um, hey, stop right there. The only reason I didn't tell you was, well, because I was, I was unsure. Like, Ty and I haven't known each other for a week. It was only three days ago we kind of started this whole thing. It moved really fast, and I, I don't know, I guess I was scared it was going to fall apart and I'd be making a fool of myself. That, and well, it was never really official. We never agreed to any terms or anything. I guess I was just protecting my self-esteem. Sounds stupid, but I just wanted to wait until I felt more secure in this situation. That's all. I promise, that's all. I understand, dude. I don't hold that against you. Like, at all. To be honest, I kind of did something similar with me and Kyrex in the beginning. Kyrex? My ex, you know, the asshole. That's, that's the first time you've mentioned his name. Well, what's the harm? It's not like you don't know I'm gay or anything. But yeah, in the beginning, I waited a little bit too. I guess, I guess I felt the same way as you. I just didn't want to look silly if everything fell apart, you know? Anyway, sorry, didn't mean to make this conversation about my problems. I was still curious about what had gone down between the two of them. Come to think of it, it had been a little while since Diego had brought it up, only for him to quickly switch topic again. I hoped he would decide to tell me one of these days. Hey, it's not like I'm the only one who left. 
allowed to have problems, you know? Feel free to talk about it any time. I'll be here to listen. Thanks, dude. But, uh, perhaps this ain't the first time with your whole thing going on, you know? So, uh, anyway, what happened exactly? Well, remember the night I was late home? Thursday, I think? We were going to watch a movie? Yeah. So after I left the bar when you were there, I paid Eric a visit. He'd hurt himself at work, so I just sort of wanted to check in. He kind of grilled me a bit about the guys I like, and I got thinking. I realized I kind of had a thing for Ty. Afterwards, I went back to the bar. You'd gone home already at that point. I just sort of, I don't know, I guess I wanted to spend time with Ty, get to know him a bit. But, uh, he saw right through me. Figured out I was into him, invited me on a date the very next day. Cafe? Yep. Stocks were found out later that day, like I said. I also offered to work the entire festival with Ty. Tried to let me off, but I insisted. And you know how that went. Yep, so Ty let me off, and then Axel covers for you. Badly. So you can spend some time with Ty. Was your plan to go home with him all along? I, I mean, I don't know. It certainly crossed my mind. Mostly, it was that we'd been getting along really well, and I just wanted some time alone with him outside of work. But he invited me back to his. Alcohol got involved. He gave me the day off, so we got drunk. And, um, well, stuff happened, basically. Okay, what kind of stuff? You know, stuff. Stuff. Like, things happened. What kind of things? Diego, are you serious? Yeah, man, what kind of stuff? You really need to work on this. We, uh, we had sex, Diego. Oh, holy fuck. Uh, um, was it good? What are you, Eric? N no, I mean, I just... Sorry, dude, I promise, that's not what I meant. It just, it took me by surprise. It's alright, you can be an idiot sometimes, but you're my idiot. H hey, shut up. <laughs> anyway, shall I continue? Oh, yeah, sorry. So I woke up this morning. He left me a sweet note and, and this change of clothes. He bundled up my dirty clothes and put them in this here bag. I grabbed the tote bag from beside the couch and dumped it in the middle of the lounge floor. It was rather damp. He even made me breakfast. Pancakes with passion fruits, with passion fruit syrup and vanilla ice cream. What? Those were our... That place just down from... How do you know? I mentioned it casually at the cafe. He remembered. Jeez, ain't gonna lie. I'm jealous. Were they good? Even better than the diner. Man, so jealous. Sounds like a keeper to me. That's just because he can cook. Guilty. The weight of my heart is straight through my stomach. What happened then? <laughs> kind of pathetic when I think back, but I remember thinking how much I wanted to spend my life with this guy. If only I knew. So later on, I visited him at the bar. It was busy, so I offered to work. He refused, but I didn't give him the choice. When it was all said and done, we chatted for a bit. Noticed he was acting a bit weird, so I convinced him to spill it. Uh-oh. Yeah, so, jeez, it's all kind of a blur now. He he assured me that he likes me, but he thinks he might be doing this for the wrong reasons. Kind of explained it like he was slamming on the brakes to avoid hurting me. Well, I mean, that's bullshit, isn't it? He's already hurt you in doing that. What were the wrong reasons, exactly? That's just it. He wouldn't say. Said it was necessity that he couldn't tell me. Dude, that, that ain't right. He just dumps you and feeds you some cryptic bullshit as to why. Well, he didn't dump me per se, but he needs some time to process. So I guess I'll be seeing him when I work on Tuesday. He didn't say much more. I mean, I left before he could. I guess after all that, I needed some space myself. And that's why you walked home. And you showed up here looking all sad. Yep. Shit, dude. I don't know what to say. I ain't good at this whole emotional support thing, but I feel for you. It fucking sucks when you're going what you're going through. Ty's kind of a dick for doing that. I mean, is he? If he's being truthful, maybe he's doing the right thing. Maybe this is all for the right reasons. I don't honestly have any reason not to trust him, regardless of how much they hurt. I've got to be honest with you, dude. I don't know if I'd trust him on that myself. He kind of sounds like a gentle way to let you down, you know? Like, maybe he just doesn't have the balls or whatever to break up with you properly. Like, maybe there was some physical attraction going on, but once you two had, you know, uh, done the deed... He realized physical attraction is really all it ever was. A bad case of post-nut clarity or whatever, you know? Dude, you're not helping. Sorry, I'm just, like, it makes sense, though, right? Go to look at these things from all angles. You can't let yourself be gullible. I couldn't help but recognize the irony in that, given Diego is probably the most gullible person I knew. I decided against derailing the conversation with yet another dig at Diego as much as I'd enjoy his exaggerated reaction. I, I guess you gotta ask yourself, do you trust Ty? I mean, I do, but I haven't known him for long. What about you? You've been working with him for a while, right? Do you trust him? This question stopped Diego in his tracks as he took time to work out his answer. Finally, he spoke once more. 
I don't think Ty's a bad guy, don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't say I trust him, no. Huh? Why do you think that? I don't know if I've told you, but he's the kind of guy who knows everything about everyone, yet nobody knows anything about, at all about him. He keeps his secrets close to his chest, only revealing things when it gives him an advantage or he sees no other choice. He also has a habit of interfering in other people's business. Like, he means well, but like, he keeps things from people and plays them like some kind of fucked up game of chess. Just because he's trying to help doesn't make that right, you know? Hmm. So, nah. I don't think he's being malicious or anything, but the fact that he's keeping something from you rubs me and rubs me up entirely the wrong way. It just doesn't bode right, but that's just me. Do you think it's anything I did? Was there anything I could have done to avoid this outcome? Actually, that's one other thing about Ty. He has a hard time lying to people. He manipulates situations through omission, but I haven't told- but I haven't known him to outright lie before. I guess what I'm saying is if he said he has feelings for you, that's probably the truth. I don't think he'd say something like that just to preserve your feelings. I see. But it's what he hasn't said that I'm weary of. There's nothing else he said that gives you any clues. I- I don't know. It's so hard without knowing what to look for. Honestly, he hasn't said a whole lot either. Hmm, I guess all we can do is wait and see for now. Do you- do you think you'll still want to be with me? I do. Diego began to say something before stopping himself. After a brief pause, he started over saying something different. I'm sure he will, dude. You have to be stupid to let someone as great as you pass them by. I smiled. I knew he specifically said what he did to cheer me up, but I appreciated it a great deal. Thanks, Diego. That means a lot to me. And thank you for cheering me up, too. For being here, I'm lucky to have you as my best friend. Aw, oh, come here. Diego pulled me close, my still damp clothing and fur pressing against his dry coat, but he didn't care. Hold me... He held me close for several moments before we turned to our previous positions. I'm, uh, I'm lucky to have you as my best friend too, Aiden. Diego flashed a bright and cheerful smile which I subsequently returned. Despite his actions and words supporting one another, I felt as though there was something a little strange about that previous sentence, something I couldn't quite put my finger on. I pondered this for several moments before Diego caught my attention by sharply shifting the topic of conversation. So, how about we take our mind off the sad stuff for a bit and play something? I borrowed a game from Axel to just today, so we could play that. I conceded myself that a distraction would hardly be a bad thing and decided to go along with Diego's suggestion. Sure thing, what is it? It's a racing game, right? But it's really fun. Like, you can pick all these power-ups, like weapons and boosts, and use them against everyone else. It's really hectic, what do you say? What do I say? I say you're going down, Diego. Over my dead body? That's the plan. Ooh, feisty. I hope you're bringing your A-game. And so with that, Diego and I had closed out an otherwise challenging day of yelling at each other over... Yelling at each other over power-ups and Diego's words, a whole lot of fucking bullshit. I had a lot of fun and even managed to win the majority of my races, something Diego grew gradually more furious about as time went on. It was a perfect distraction from everything that had transpired, and I was grateful to Diego for suggesting it. Despite this, however, my mind couldn't help but drift back to Ty. I still had a crazy crush on him, and I still trusted him. But it was what I didn't know that bothered me. I couldn't understand why things had gone the way they had. Was it wise to trust him? What did he mean by the right reasons? If there were right reasons, then what were the wrong ones? What was the challenging situation Ty spoke of that perhaps sparked this whole mess? And above all else, what were the necessities that prevented Ty from going into any detail? Man, why must relationships always be so damn complicated? We're gonna leave off here tonight. So, yeah. That was very interesting. Yep. Yeah. Um, in case you couldn't tell by the uh, tweet that I made earlier, I've been having issues with RenPy as of late. Yeah, it isn't fun. So yeah, uh, another question. Uh, should should I do another game development live stream tomorrow?
Yeah. Um, I'm checking my uh, schedule real quick. Getting into two thirty. Okay, it'll probably be around uh, the same time as the last one, at around the three three thirty. Might be later, but okay. Just a quick note: it will not be for to the sky. I'm actually ahead of schedule on that one, like way ahead of schedule. Instead, it will be, the, because I haven't done one in a while, a uh, alternate, an alternate universe mod for Echo, because I do a lot of those. I should probably release that file. But yeah, once I get a specific time, I will post it on Twitter. And nothing much else can be said, so stay safe, have a good night, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.